Last week we showed you Cinnamon who hatched seven chicks without any issues whatsoever. This week Nutmeg was due to hatch her clutch. Now she was sat on 13 eggs but it wasn't quite so straightforward. So let's take you through the sequence of events. Day one of hatching started very positively for Nutmeg. She was sat tight on the eggs, but she was also alert and she was responding to the chicks who were calling from inside the eggs. Sure enough, later in the day, we could see the first chick had hatched successfully. One hour later and it all changed as Nutmeg left the nest. Now at this stage she had two chicks that were very mobile. They'd hatched some time ago so could move around very easily. At the same time she had four further chicks which were in various stages from finding their feet to newly hatched and just drying out. A little while later and four of the chicks had actually managed to follow Nutmeg out of the coop and into the run. That left two chicks that are out of shot but they are there hidden in the nest who were not capable of following her. They couldn't even stand up let alone walk at this stage. Now they were becoming more and more distressed and calling for Nutmeg to return to them but she wasn't coming back. She was staying in that run. Now I do have to say that these are not remote cameras, these are hidden cameras. So it wasn't until I did a routine check shortly after this point that I actually came across the chicks. Now they were cold, so I scooped them up and brought them into our chicken ICU. Just so you can see what they looked like, this is one of the two chicks when I found them. So this is what I ambitiously refer to as my chick ICU. So it's just an old tin bath and inside we've got wood shavings as bedding. Then we've got a very small water sat on a brick that you can see on the right hand side. And on the left there is a brood plate. And that does exactly what it says on the tin. It's just a heating element in a flat square. And that gives warmth to the chicks very much like a brood mother does. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna zoom in so you can have a look at the two chicks. Now, they are normally quite noisy, but they've suddenly got a little bit quiet. And here they are. And there is chick number one, who's the fluffy one. And it is absolutely fine. And I think we're going to return him or her this evening to Nutmeg. It's just needed a bit of time to gather some strength and um, try and be able to be a little bit more mobile. And then the other chick, who is actually blending in surprisingly well, but you can see some movement there, struggled to get out of the egg and it's taken a bit longer to recover. Now, it's very, very feisty. It's moving around as you can see and it's probably going to need another day in this chick ICU. And then tomorrow evening, we'll return it back to Nutmeg but I'm hopeful for both of them. So the chicks have been in the ICU now since about 10 o'clock this morning and it's now 8 p.m. in the evening. Both chicks are now very feisty. As you can hear, I think they're cheap, cheap, cheeping away. They are very strong. They seem to be in a position to go back to nutmeg. Now, what I would normally do with chicks to return them to the broodmother is to wait till roosting time and just slip them under her wing and normally she doesn't even notice. Now Nutmeg though, because she's been such an appalling broodmother so far, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pop them in a cardboard box with some air holes, just put a little bit of coverage on it so it seals, let them cheep 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 next to her. The idea is that she gets used to their noises then when it gets to roosting in about another half an hour, I'll pop them out of the box and slip them under her wing. That's supposed to be more successful, but I've got nothing to lose at this stage. 
So this is chick number one, as you can see, very healthy, big, fluffy, seems very animated, clearly noisy. So here we go, chick number one in the box. Now this is chick number two. Chick number two is a little bit younger, probably about six hours younger and he's not dried out quite as well but he's animated enough, he's noisy enough for me to feel comfortable for him to go back to the broodmother. So two chicks in the box, now time to go back to Nutmeg. So this is Nutmeg's coop and here she is on the inside. And all I'm going to do is pop the cardboard box in beside her and we will leave that for a little while and we'll see what happens. So the cardboard box idea seems to be an epic fail but just simply releasing them in with the chickens seems to be an absolute success. So Nutmeg does not appear to be rejecting them at all. So now, one minute later, we can see that the two chicks with all of their siblings are now underneath Nutmeg. So that's a fantastic success. So here we are in the kitchen. So not only did Nutmeg have some problems with some chicks that she'd already hatched and decided to leave behind, she also left seven eggs in the nest. Now, when we tested the eggs, we could hear cheeping on the inside, we could see some pipping, and we could see some movement when they were put on a flat surface. So we decided to bring them in and pop them in this incubator. Now I'm just gonna zoom in for you because I think you can see egg number 10 there has got a huge great big hole in it and there is a chick desperate to get out into the world he's the very very loud one there so we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that the other eggs successfully manage to break out um, and we'll see how many chicks we have in the next sequence so here we are under the brooder and we've got another further three chicks that have hatched. Now these came from the eggs which were abandoned by Nutmeg and we brought them in, popped them in the incubator and we've got some successful hatchlings. Now one has already fluffed up so it's definitely strong enough to go back to Nutmeg this evening. We have one that's just drying out at the moment but it's very noisy and very feisty. But we have a third who took a long time to get out of the egg. It's exhausted itself so it's taking a little bit longer to dry out. It may need another day under the brooder but we'll follow the progress today and see how we get on. In the meantime, we have two further eggs still in the incubator that are pipping. So we'll let you know how that goes today. We already have three chicks which have hatched from the eggs which Nutmeg abandoned. But we've had a further three eggs in the incubator and I'm just going to disconnect the incubator very briefly and show you inside because we have two new chicks and the third chick is pipping at the moment. Now, as you can see, they haven't fluffed up yet and they have literally only just come out of those eggs. I need to keep them warm. So I'm going to pop the lid straight back on, plug it back in and leave them to fluff up. I'm glad to report that the last egg has produced another little chick and again it's another feisty one. We saved two chicks from hypothermia and we hatched a further six. Now unfortunately only five of those six that hatched survived so we've reintroduced seven chicks back to Nutmeg. She now has a brood of 11 strong where she only started with four to begin with. 
Now they're going to stay in the run for a couple of days just so all the chicks have enough strength to be out and about and then they'll be allowed out into the wider enclosure with the rest of the flock. We hope that you found this informative. If you have liked the video, please do give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave us a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and click the notifications button and you'll immediately get notified of a new video that's been posted. Now, I'm gonna stay with Gannett and we'll look forward to the next successful hatching.